This video is brought to you by Pinshape, the online marketplace for free and premium 3D printable files. Pinshape, power to the designers. Hey everybody, it's Joe. Welcome back to the workbench. So happy to have you here. You know, today we're going to be talking about one of the really cool things about 3D printing. The fact that you don't have to make the same thing. It's not just a manufacturing machine. You can make things that you want for you and, and that's personalized. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to just throw some relevant text. So I'm going to go over a couple of different ways to do that on a couple of different types of objects. To start with, we're going to use this one. This is the uh, Maker Faire... Uh, action robot figure, robot action figure, uh, and it's a it's a super cool model. I could nerd out about this model for a while. Let's go and edit out. Do you see the neck? Do you see how the neck, the, the head goes all the way to the build platform, and the body is an object around it, and they're using the overhang so that they're, they're separate objects, but they're nested together. I mean, that's just it, and it's going on in this entire model, that sort of ingenuity. Oh, I could nerd out about it. If you want to see me nerd out like this, Click on my head, that'll be the uh, Space Wrench video where I just nerded out about how cool it is. Same sort of ingenuity is going on in this thing, but that's not what we're here for. Today, we're here to throw some text on here. And look how flat the back is. Perfect. We're going to put some text on this thing's back. So let's first just get it out of the way and add a text object. And that text object is really little. So we're going to come over here to the font menu and we're going to bump its size up. There we go. And we're going to center it. And there we go. And then we're going to enter edit mode. And notice how edit mode now is not about uh, uh, editing vertices. It's editing text. A text object. What an idea. All right. So I'm just going to write some text here. Uh, I am not a robot. There we go. And uh, no, this text object has no volume or shape. Uh, just has that. So we come over here to the extrude and go to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is a good is a good thickness. Even if you're printing it vertically, 0 0.5 technically is an overhang, but it's not a lot of overhang, and it corrects itself really fast, even without supports. In fact, I recommend if you're going to have overhangs like this, don't print supports. You can confuse your slicer. No supports. Um, you can also change the font here. Come over here and go to your fonts directory. I like Bauhaus for just about everything I do. Most of my branding is is Bauhaus. But I'm not sure Bauhaus is the right choice for this one. Things are a little bit too close together. So we're just gonna just gonna revert this back to the wind the, the blender default. Um, we do need to worry, however, about uh, yes, it's an object. We need to worry about wall thickness. And if you don't remember all that discussion click on my head I'll take you to the YHT and wall thickness discussion video that kind of started this whole series I'm just gonna zoom right into the bottom here and, and just eyeball it one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah these are 0.1 millimeters it's 0.9 millimeters remember the wall thickness needs to be at least 0.8 so we are good all right now let's just take this sucker and position it uh, rotate it in the X 90 degrees uh, rotate it into Z 180 degrees. No into Z. Thank you. And, uh, oops, what did I do there? Wow, that was a mistake, but kind of neat. All right. Oh, I think I can make it a little bit bigger. Size 15? Yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't want it to start getting into the curves. That's good. Now I want to put it right on the back, so I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to put him back where he was. I'm going to edit, enter edit mode and just grab one of these vertices on the back. No, I don't want to move it, I just want to look at it. And on the global, it oh, it's the same global or local. Uh, 62.787, 62.75. Grab that text object and move it to 62.75 in the Y. And now, if we turn off the extrude modifier, we'll see that the text is right on there, but if we turn back on the extrude on here, now, isn't this kind of weird? I said to extrude at 0.5 millimeters, and it extruded at 0.5 millimeters in both directions. And that's kind of bad and maybe a little bit of a bug in Blender, but it actually works for us in this case, because when you Boolean objects, you want them to be partially in the object and partially out. Uh, the out part being the part you're trying to Boolean into it. You want it to be in the object. So in this case, it actually works for us that it's doing this. 
So we're going to come over and we're going to add the Boolean modifier to the robot. Union it. But the text isn't on the list. That's because the text is not a mesh. It's a text object. So what we have to do is convert it. I always duplicate my text objects in case I want to go back and edit them and then hit Alt-C to convert it to a mesh. Now if we enter this thing, see, it's all vertices and it's all points. I need to point out something interesting about this though. Let's go into local mode and let's zoom in on this point right here. I click this point and you notice the highlighting from this point that's telling me what lines it's associated with is going this direction and that direction, but it's not going this direction. Why not? If I hit it in wireframe mode and click it again, now it's telling me it's a part of these lines, but it's not a part of those lines. What's going on here? What's going on here is that the extrude uh, the extrude option in the text creates separate objects. The face of this is one object, the side of it is another object. They have no volume, they're just flush up against each other. You can fix it fairly easily, but let's not fix it unless we need to fix it. First, let's just grab, try to Boolean. There's the text now because it's a mesh. Let's put the text on there and see what happens. If it's a problem, we'll fix it. If not, we won't because it's possible by fixing it that we'll make the problem worse. All right, robot, how'd that work? You notice how the text is inside, but not out, the, the outside of it that's part of the robot because of the Boolean modifier is good. The inside of it is not there because it's inside the robot. This is a perfect Boolean. It's manifold, it's perfect. Mission accomplished, we don't need to fix the text. Hands off, we're good to go. Just take this uh, file as it is, file, export it as an STL and print that thing away. Let's look at another example real fast. Now this skull here was created by uh, pin shape user Tanya Weisner, and it's a really cool, it's a, it's a uh, Wacom tablet holder, or pen holder. You put your pen in there and it's cool but it's not flat there's no flat surfaces there's uh there's that's that's curved there's no flat surfaces to put text on here also it's much smaller than the other one so we can't put much text on there you can't just make your text small remember wall thickness is important oh what are we going to do here well let's start the same way we did before let's move that out of the way let's add a text object uh let's crank the size up a little bit center it edit it. Let's just let's just put the name of the person who I'm going to give this to. This is going to be uh, this is going to be Yorick's skull pen holder. And uh, we need to have an extrude modifier on there 0 0.5 again and then let's rotate it x90 and rotate it around the z180. And that's kind of where we want it. Actually, yeah. So I'm going to put this thing back. I'm not. I'm not going to try. I mean, we, if we try to put this thing onto, there we go. If we try to put this thing onto the skull right now, it's not going to work. It's it's either going to be too far in the skull, or it's going to be have parts of it dangling out in midair. It's just not going to work. It's it's not happy. So instead. Let's add a curve, a circle. We like circles, they're nice and easy to work with. Scale that thing up, move it up a little bit. Uh, let's put it about where we want it and then try and just squish it and reshape it until it looks, we, we want it to be as much as possible uh, on the surface of the skull. And I could fiddle with it a little bit, but I'm gonna try and keep this simple. Now, you grab the text here now this text is sitting right there. And you notice that there's, if you go into this text menu here, there is a text on curve here. So you grab that and you put your Bayesian circle and, oh, well, that's not what I wanted at all. Uh, there is a way to make this work, but I find it's a lot easier just to use the curve modifier. But before we use the curve modifier, I want to use the curve modifier on the text, not on the mesh. Because if you convert after you do it, yeah, it's a it's a headache. So uh, let's just uh, duplicate that and convert it to a mesh. 
Now, I want to talk about this mesh real fast. You notice how, especially on the O, but the R and the C as well, it's got a bunch of vertical lines, and we're going to take and curve it this way. What's going to happen to those edges when we try and curve it this way? Not good things. Those edges aren't going to curve correctly. So what we do is select all the points, hit X, and go to Limited Dissolve. Limited Dissolve tries to turn everything into flat end gons. Now, it didn't quite do it here. There are still a couple of of uh, oops, horizontal lines here, and we'd like to get rid of those, but it's it's not going to let us get rid of those. You know, we'll just have to leave those couple of vertical lines. The rest of it will be fine. As it curves this way, because it's an end gon, it'll reposition the edges so it'll go around that curve much nicer. This will this will make you happy to do it. This trust me. And now we're going to take this, add the curve modifier to it, and curve it around the Bezier circle. <gasps> Well, now it's going forward. What's that about? Yeah. You know, curves are funny. They have a start and end point. So if I rotate this around the Z 180 degrees, now the curve is over here. Unfortunately, Yorick is now backwards, so I need to take it and rotate it 180 degrees around the Z. Okay, fine. Now I need to move it to where it belongs. And it's kind of moving backwards. You can see the center point there. As I move it this way, it's moving that, the text's moving that way, and so it's kind of weird to move it like this. I find it's best just to move it in one axis at a time. Move it on the Z, then move it on the Y, and there we are. It's in there, kind of-ish. Oh, the K's wrong there. Let's see if I can fix that shape just a little bit, flatten it out a little bit, um, move this into Y a little bit. Oh boy, I do not like that. Let's move this along the X a little bit. That's better. I might want to tilt it maybe. Would tilting it work better? Yes, about there is probably as good as we're going to get. This is a place where we could fiddle all day long. And you know, as much as I enjoy fiddling, I don't want to make you guys watch me do it in a video. Instead, let's add the Boolean modifier, union it with this text which is already a mesh so we don't need to worry about making it convert we already did the converting and it worked why did it work it wasn't supposed to work oh crud the bottom of the text is sticking out so good i get to mess with it a little bit more grab that thing and move it into y just to, okay <laughs> whoa whoa what happened here okay that was not good. Let's grab the skull, turn off the Boolean modifier, move this in the Y just a little bit. We still want it to be sticking out there. And turn that Boolean modifier back on. See if we can make it fail like that again. I, I really want it to fail like that again. It doesn't want to fail like that again. Uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't do modifiers with the text on. That's just ridiculous. Okay, turn turn off the boolean. Oh, now it can't even do the boolean. Are you sure you can't? You want to try again? No, it doesn't want to do it. All right. Let's move this up just a little bit. Move it in the Y just a little bit. Not too far. Let's try doing that boolean modifier again. Give it just a second. Okay, it worked this time. I'm going to pretend it didn't work. If it doesn't work, the best thing to do is to grab the text and go into it. Remember how I told you that the points were doubled and they are still doubled? If you select them all, come down here, remove doubles, that will fix it. Sometimes. In this case, actually, it's going to cause us more trouble. Uh... Let's redo the boot, turn off and on the Boolean modifier so it attaches itself. No, it actually worked for us. If that doesn't work, the best thing to do is to go in and, uh, sorry about this, I messed that up. If that doesn't work, the best thing to do is to go in and recalculate the UV, um, UV shading. Now, I don't recommend doing these if you don't have to do them. Just click this recalculate and it will get the UV straight. I don't recommend doing them if you don't have to do them because sometimes they can make your life worse. But in this case, it didn't. So that's the troubleshooting tips. Remove doubles, 
fix your UV, but do them one at a time. Don't do them if you don't need to do them. Okay, so that's how we do it around the curve. Now, what happens if I want to do it around the object that has considerably more shape to it? Well, I'll tell you about that, but we're out of time. We're going to have to cover that in another video. If there is a specific object that you don't think would work with either one of these techniques that I've shown you already, challenge me to do it, and maybe in a future video I will show you how I would do that. Maybe an object like this one that's really complex. But, either way, I want to thank you guys for watching. Simon is down there to remind you to share... Uh, subscribe, uh, like, subscribe, share, and enjoy. And uh, I hope that this has inspired you to make something not just cool, but personalized for somebody. Thank you for watching. For more information and 3D printable files from this video and the workbench, visit Pinshape. Link wherever links are found.